Hi there. In this video I want to go over making web forms in Dreamweaver. And of course a web form is simply an online form which allows true interaction between the web visitor and the website. And they can be done on a simple scale or a complex scale. They can be done with some back-end scripting as is might you might do like with PHP scripting accessing database or at the very least you can make a simple co contact form that uses a free script out on the web so that you can have users fill out a form on your web page and send it in and it will go to your email account which I think is at the very minimum something uh, you should do for your websites now I just want to give you a quick couple of examples here um, let's see I'm on a here's Craigslist and of course you know what forms are because you've every pretty much every website has them. So I'm over here at Craigslist, and at the very basic level, we have a little form over here on the far left side. So this is a text box, okay? So it's an input type text, and it also has a selection menu. A select menu creates a drop-down menu of choices, and then we have this little button here with an arrow. Now, despite you know, e or even though it's going to say different things, this is a submit button and every form needs a submit button so this form is complete it just happens to have a couple elements a text box input type text a select menu with several options and a submit button now just so you can kinda of see what the structure of this is in HTML I'm gonna go ahead and view the source code of this web page so we can check it out and view the page source now let me go find that form tag Okay, here we go. So they're using a form, and we can see it all here starting uh, right about from here all the way down. So this is the form used for the search box over at Craigslist. And they've given a unique ID, and they've given an action. The action points to where the data of a form is going to be submitted. Now, when we start off making our form here, I'm not going to put an action in there, but I will at a later in a, in a follow-up video. We'll put an action in, and we'll find one on the web so we can send it to email. And this is method equals get. You'll find either method equals get method e or method equals post for forms on the web, depending on how the data is going to get sent to the server. Now, of course, they've got a div with some plain text that has nothing to do, of course, with the form. That's just simply a text label. They've got two hidden inputs. This is how you can send data to the server, to the script on the server, basically, um, right in there. And, of course, people visiting the web page, they don't see this information, and it comes in handy. When you need to submit data to a script, especially if you use a free script, you'll, find, you'll have to have some hidden uh, data in there. We'll get to that soon enough. Ah. Input ID query. Now I mentioned it was going to be input type text, a little text box. If you don't use a type attribute, then by default it is text. That's the most common one. So they have a little text box right here. Then they break. Then they go to a selection menu, and there's several options. And each option has a unique value. Then there's another input. This is type equals submit. That creates a little submit button. The value they're using, this is uh, called an entity ampersand gt semicolon that's a little greater than symbol that's how they get that little arrow on there and that is their complete form when somebody fills out the text box chooses something from the selection menu and hits the submit button the data is going to go to a script which is which is located in a folder called search on the uh, craigslist server okay let me go ahead and close that so that is a basic uh, web form right there now I'm just going to look at something a little bit more detail. I'm going to go to their bikes for sale area and let's look at the form up here at the top. Now I won't view the source code on this one, but we can see that they've got a couple more things. Notice they have several examples of text boxes and they've also got another select menu with more options. There's a submit button and they also have a couple of check boxes on here. Check boxes allow you to choose one or multiple items of a series of choices. So they have a couple different things going on. The little min and max that you see before you click on, that's most likely done here with JavaScript, and we'll probably tr check that out in a future video as well. So this form is a little bit more complicated, but it still has the basic form elements, and it has a submit button, input type submit. So we want to create a form. So let's jump over to Dreamweaver. And I've already got a web page started here. The only thing I've got is a headline. And creating forms is extremely easy. There's even a uh, tab just for it. So 
I can go to my insert panel, here's my forms tab, and all of these options up here are for forms. The ones on the far right are for sprys, which are form elements with built-in JavaScript so they can make some interaction. Pretty neat things. We're going to focus by starting on most of the items on the left. The very first button is the most critical, the form button. If you have three forms on a web page, then you're going to have three sets of form tags. I'm going to start off with just one, so I'm going to click this little form button and it creates a set of form tags for me. And in fact, I can see with my tag selector in the lower left, it's even given me a unique ID for this form, and it's called it, creatively, Form 1. All right, so let's go ahead and create a basic contact form. And since I think it's going to be a contact form, let's give it a, uh, a better ID. So I'm going to edit my tag selector using my, my quick tag, I'm sorry, not my tag selector, but my, I'm going to use the quick tag editor. And instead of form ID equals form one, I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, contact one, because I want to make a contact form. And now we can see my form is called contact one down here in my tag selector. Now within my form, I want to put in some information. Uh, let's see, I'll go back to my text tab real quick. I'll do a headline two, and I'm going to go ahead and put in contact form. We can format that later on. Back to my forms tab, and now let me go ahead and put in some basic information. I'll start off with a text field. Now as soon as I hit the text field button, it gives me, of course, the attributes panel or dialog box, and I can start to put in some information here. ID. I like to give my form elements, and this is a form element, it's a text box, a unique ID. It comes in handy and I'll show you in just a second. So this is going to be, I'm going to ask for the person's uh, first name. So I'll go ahead and type in, ID is going to be first name. For IDs, don't use any spaces, and it's best to use all lowercase letters, and don't use, or don't start off your IDs with a number. Label, and for label, this is going to be something that's a little bit more descriptive, uh, so I'm sorry, a little bit more human friendly. So a label can be quite, you know, you have spaces and capitalization. This is what people are going to see on the screen. So go ahead and type in first name and a colon. Now for my style, I'm going to attach label tag using the for attribute. This is great, especially if you're using an ID. Let me show you a, a nice benefit of using the second option. Attach label tag using a for attribute. Now where do I want my label before the form item? Yes, in this example having the label before the text before the text box is is reasonable. There's other situations like radio buttons and check boxes where it's good to have the label after the item. Access key and tab index I'm going to ignore for now. Access keys if you wanted to associate a keyboard key, a shortcut key for the item, and tab index is if you want to alter the tab order. Um, that makes sense in larger forms, so people can tab through the various fields. If it doesn't, if it's not already in a good default order, you can arrange that order with tab index. Otherwise, I put in an ID, a label, and I chose attach label using the for attribute, position before form item, I'll click OK, and there we go. I've got a label and my text box. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this a couple times really quick, making a few more text boxes. There we go, I repeated a few of those steps, just making a couple more text boxes, and I'm also going to go ahead and put in a submit button. I'll simply click the button option, and for ID I'll simply call this submit. For label, I don't need a label for this one, and then I can click OK. There we go. It doesn't look like much, but this is a complete form. Now it doesn't have function because I haven't done an action for it yet, but I'll check that out in uh, some, uh, some follow-up videos.